This is the Collector Car Podcast, the home for the auto enthusiast. Join Greg Stanley as he applies over 25 years of insights and analytical experience to the collector car market. He will interview the experts and throw in some fun stuff as well. Hey, it's Greg Stanley. If you're listening to this podcast, you know I love everything automotive. This passion has expanded to include being a car specialist consultant for RM Sotheby's. So if you need assistance buying or consigning a collector car at any one of our online or live auctions, including Scottsdale, Amelia Island, or Monterey, you can reach one of our car specialists at rmsotheby's.com or you can email me directly at gstanley at rmsotheby's.com. Metron Garage is a company designing unique garages, condos, and other structures specifically for the auto enthusiasts. They've got eight models to choose from, including two-story options, which I think is super cool, while with a very modern look and feel to them. And they come in all sizes, and they're fully customizable. You can check out them today and start specking your own ultimate garage at metrongarage.com, where you can request a catalog or talk to someone to learn more. So be sure to check it out. Well, welcome back to the Collector Car Podcast. Hey, it's Greg Stanley. And today I would like to welcome Luigi Orlandini, who is the chairman and CEO of Canosa. Canosa puts on world-class automotive events, including the premier Ferrari Concours, Cavallino Classic in Palm Beach, Modena, and the Middle East. Now, Luigi, how are you doing today? All good. Thank you. Um, very good. Uh, the sun is shining uh, here in Italy, so uh, we're, we're looking for the spring uh, to come uh, and to see our uh, event season uh, start uh, very soon. Yeah, it's pretty funny because we were in the same room like last weekend at Amelia Island, and now I'm in Cincinnati and you're in Italy. I have cloudy weather and you have summer weather. So <laughs> Got to get back down to Florida. So, well, yeah, we actually originally met down in Palm Beach at Cavallino Classic, and that's where Arm Sotheby's recently became a sponsor. And so I appreciate you being on the podcast, and I wanted to see if you could just kind of share a little bit about Canosa and then, you know, Cavallino Classic as well, and anything else you'd like to talk about. Oh, sure. Thank you. Well, Canosa starts as an event company. Uh, we started, actually, I started this company mainly for fun. No? Um, I, I used to do rallies as a participant, and I used to run a different business. I sold that business to a British group uh, at some point in the past. I did some period of some endeavor, you know, and then I was unemployed. And, uh, I was saying, oh, wow, uh, we, we have a fantastic rally in Italy, which is the Mille Miglia, which is super international, but it's based in Brescia. I'm from uh, the, what we call the Motor Valley. I'm from Reggio Emilia, a small country, a small village, very close to Modena. And uh, yes, uh, we had no international classical rallies in our region. So I said, we have to fix this. And I started with thinking what we can do. So we uh, started talking with friends uh, and we came out uh, with this name, uh, the Gran Premio delle Terre di Canossa. Uh, Canossa was, uh, uh, refers to Matilde di Canossa, who was the queen of Italy in the 11th century. In that time, uh, in that year, in 2011, when we did the first edition of this rally, it was the ni- 900 years uh, since her coronation as queen of Italy. And there's a story between Henry IV, uh, the, um, um, the German emperor, and the Pope that met at Canossa wow. uh, no, to make peace. And uh, so it's a well-known story in Italy, also in the German-speaking countries. And so we, came, we, we took the name from that, that person, which was also a great person that brought peace to Italy and between the Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor, Empire. So... That's, uh, that was the name of the rally. And I started calling all my friends uh, who were uh, doing rallies and that I met at other rallies. Uh, you have to come, please, it will be something nice. And it was probably the first rally in Europe, uh, uh, for sure in Italy, maybe also in Europe, uh, where we combine all the good, uh, good racing, nice roads, but also five-star hospitality, Michelin star chef. On our first rally, we had three nights with three Michelin star chef, wow. one per night. It was uh, no, something quite new as a concept, as a format. And then I did a, some a team to create this. So I founded the Canossa events. And so it, the name of the company comes from the name of the first rally I decided to do. It was uh, successful. So the year after I took over uh, the Modena Centore, which, uh, which is a racing event uh, that was run by a friend of mine in Modena. And then we started doing things here and there. We started working also with car manufacturers, including Ferrari, which is a, our very important client. And uh, yeah, that's how Canossa developed. 
we are quite good, I think, in doing this, in doing this kind of uh, uh, automobile events, motoring events, uh, or we call them also driving events. Then we grew, we opened an office in Dubai, then we put our first step in the States uh, just before the, the pandemic, no? That's, so we had to stop. During the <laughs> pandemic, I managed to acquire Cavallino, which is a fantastic event and a fantastic magazine. Uh, and I'm so happy I managed now to make this deal with uh, with John Barnes, uh, who did a great job uh, in, in the fourth, in the forty something previous years. So that's uh, where we are, and uh, that's how we put Canossa and Cavallino together. Cavallino is a fantastic event. No, you know, this was the thirty first edition. Actually, we did the acquisition in, at the end of twenty twenty. So we were Canossa was already owning the event in twenty one, but I wanted John Barnes to complete is a series of 30 events. So I said, John, this is your event. Uh, you have to do it. And so you will have in your career 30 edition of the Cavallino. So we then made a kind of change of management. Uh, John Mars is still on board, of course, as part of the team, but uh, we try to do the event our own way, starting from uh, this past edition in January. So you just gave me a ton of stuff. I got, I got a couple of questions for you. <laughs> oh, oh. So, so you <laughs> mentioned... You were a participant before you got involved in ownership of like a rally. Is that correct? Yeah, well, well, let's say uh, I was also working a lot before, but uh, I had the time to do here and there. I did some nice uh, rallies around uh, Italy, Europe, uh, no, uh, in the winter, uh, in the, the summer. I did the Monte Carlo Historic a few times, also the Mille Miglia in Japan, for example. So I, I come from the other side, though, from the participant yeah. side. Then I became an organizer. And now I have no time to do anything anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm working too much. So, <laughs> One day... <laughs> you have the view from a participant's perspective, which is great, you know, because you know huh? what a participant would like or not like. Now, I have to ask, what was your car of choice for those rallies? Was it an Alfa? Was it a Ferrari? Was I'm assuming it was Italian, right? Um, I'm not a big collector, honestly. I have a very humble collection of a few Ferraris, uh, six, a yep. couple of Alphas. And a Fiat. So, what was your, what's your favorite rally car? All Italians and all convertible. I only have open cars. This is kind of religious, no? <laughs> Including the new one. I'm, I just get it. I just got the news from the dealership that my my new 812 GTS has been registered, so I can go and pick it up at the dealership in Modena. Maybe I don't have time tomorrow, but maybe Monday I can go. Well, I'll try to speed this interview up so you can get it today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Today, tomorrow, the agenda is full. Maybe Monday. Anyway, it's uh, still winter time, so I, I have time uh, to, to enjoy it uh, later in the year. Um, uh, my favorite uh, car, for sure, um, for this kind of events, uh, is my 1962 Giulia Spider, mm. which is, of course, is the same as the Giulietta, same shape, but uh, in 62, they put the 1600 uh, uh, engine into the same body, just a little bit of uh, small differences, but it's a uh, car that uh, uh, looks great, drives in a fantastic way. Even if you crash, it is not a problem. You can fix it. Uh, it's not a big value. So that's definitely my, my most, um, my preferred car. Yeah. Okay. Now, my other question for you is, was Cavallino Classic your first foray into the U.S.? Or were you doing other events prior in 2019 or so? I happened to manage a big Ferrari event uh, in uh, San Francisco in 2015. I would say, okay. but uh, part of the past. Then we actually started trying to do events in uh, in the states uh, at the end of 2019. So at, in February 2020, we had to, uh, we had to stop. <laughs> <laughs> so it was not, uh, let me say, a lucky start. Um, we did our first uh, actual event in the state was in October. We did a rally in uh, New England, uh, going around uh, Maine and New Hampshire to see the wonderful colors of autumn there. It was really fantastic. A small group of cars, uh, different car, classic, modern. But uh, uh, what we had in common was mainly the, the passion. So sure. it was fantastic, uh, very nice atmosphere, uh, all fantastic people. So that's 
the type of, of event that I really like, you know, spending three, four days with fellow enthusiasts, uh, not big numbers, you know, 20 cars, uh, 25. Uh, it's the right size to have fun uh, and enjoy the, the, the things. And we also do much bigger rallies and we do other things. But uh, that's really uh, cool. That was uh, a, our, our very first event in the States. And then we, took, you know, we, we started with Cavallino, which I'm very happy with. It was a fantastic event. Yeah, okay. And now I, I see that Cavallino, like we mentioned earlier, there's also Cavallino events in Modena and the Middle East. I get Modena, I guess, for Middle East because there's such a large Ferrari presence over there. Is that correct? Uh, so uh, let me say, first of all, the, 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 Cavallino, the Cavallino Classic is the one in Palm Beach. Uh, of course, uh, we want to keep it there. Maybe you heard some rumors, people say, no, that we are moving the Cavallino to Miami or whatever, or whatever. No, Cavallino Classic is and we stay in Palm Beach, and that will remain the, the main event, the one with 150 cars, a the, the lot of spectators, a big show over four days. So that's, that's the plan. What we decided, what we thought is that Cavallino uh, can go anywhere in the world. If you think Amelia Island is, is, takes place in Amelia, and, and the same is Pebble Beach, and the same is uh, Villa d'Este in Italy. Uh, Cavallino, no, is neutral, uh, so it's not actually tied to a specific place. So what we thought uh, is to bring it around the world for two reasons. One is to make the rest of the world aware of what Cavallino Classic in Balbici is, and to, in this way, be able to attract uh, people from overseas to the big event in Palm Beach. Because Cavallino was super famous in the States, but we cannot say the same in Europe, uh, and Probably no one knew about it in the Middle East or maybe also in Asia. So for us, it's a way to increase the, the awareness of this uh, fantastic name and brand. And, uh, and the other uh, aim that we have is uh, to uh, spread the culture for cars, for the preservation and restoration of uh, this beautiful work of art, I would say, not just car, that Ferrari did in the past. And the, the culture in, in America is very developed, in Europe uh, as well. In the Middle East, this is something quite new, to be honest, right. but it's coming. So I think we are like an, uh, now we're on a mission to bring this culture also around the world. Of course, those events will keep the same standa- standards uh, as Cavallino, as the, as the main Cavallino in Palm Beach, uh, so same judging guidelines, uh, same quality of cars, uh, say carefully selected. Uh, but will be small events, uh, so like boutique event. No, uh, last year in Modena we said we stop at twenty. Then we had to put some cars uh, more in, so we ended up with thirty, thirty-one to be accurate, because we had so many, you uh, know, demand. So such a big demand that we're okay, okay, you can come. It, it's difficult to say no uh, sometimes. No, Dubai uh, and Abu Dhabi was the same. We made a show under Burj Khalifa, no, the tallest tower in the world. Uh, uh, one day, and then we moved to Abu Dhabi, where the cast had, for the weekend, for the Formula One weekend, it was super enjoyable, and we had uh, many collectors from the Middle East uh, showing up and enjoying also the concourse. We, um, as there, this game is new, we prepare a, a kind of uh, training. So the day before, we keep a course, a lesson on how to present a car to the judges, uh, what are the concourse conditions, uh, what, uh, what we mean for that. And we saw these collectors uh, very interested and then playing the game and taking the, the competition uh, uh, very seriously. And we saw happy smiles, happy faces when uh, they got a trophy, uh, <laughs> no a platinum award oh my god that's fantastic uh, then we saw now uh, post on the instagram of those uh, new of those collectors so i think we did a good job also to explain uh, to this new world what uh, what cavallino is and what the concourse of elegance so is uh, of course the cars were younger no yeah, sure but that's the culture uh when Ferrari was uh, doing the, two, the, the 250 GTO in 62, I wasn't even alive. <laughs> 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 and the same for many collectors. So when you, when you, I don't know, my, my generation, you, you grew up dreaming the 40, dreaming the Testarossa, no, those cars. And that's what you end up to you know, collect yeah. when uh, you grow when you grow up and you have the money to buy some very good some very good examples no so there's um, th- th- that's uh, 
well, let's say the, the, the age of the cars was a bit different uh, uh, than Palm Beach, but uh, the passion was exactly the same. And uh, no, the game, the competition was uh, really the same. We achieved our goals. And of course, we are going on this year as well. Modena will be at the end of May and we will return to Abu Dhabi at uh, the end of November when the F1 will be, the, the last race of F1 uh, will take place. Maybe we have some other news for another. Fortunately, we still are discussing a few details, so I cannot tell you now. Um, hopefully, in one week, uh, we'll have uh, some other news for another uh, small, nice, uh, special uh, Cavallino Classic. Sure, yeah, and actually for the listeners, by the time you listen to this, this news will be public, so check in the description to find out what this is that is uh-huh. alluded so, to here. Uh, yeah, the website, of course. Yeah, uh-huh. and I love the model because, you know, you could go to Vancouver and have a Cavallino event, right? And there's probably incredible Ferraris up there. You know, like you said, you can go anywhere over across the world. And what also is great about it is now that I know there's one in Modena after going to the one in Palm Beach, I want to check it out there. And I'm sure people in Modena will say, well, we want to come to Palm Beach now to check out the premier one. And for my listeners, you might not know this, but it is such a premier Ferrari show and the judging is so good that restorers and collectors want to get their cars into the show to be judged at such a high level because honestly, it adds a lot of value to the car. It says that this is one of the best in the world. It's been gone over by the top experts in the world. And it's really interesting because you'll see these incredible cars come fresh out of a restoration shop if they get accepted to Cavallino to get judged as quickly as possible to get that top prize. Isn't that correct? That, that's exactly uh, how it works. And uh, I mean, that's why also um, our mission is to preserve the fantastic reputation that Cavallino has built. Uh, over the last uh, 30 years. That's what we are actually doing, what we did this year in Palm Beach and what we will continue to do in the future. And yes, for a Ferrari, you know, uh, getting a prize at Cavallino is really something valuable you know, for the, for the car and for uh, the owner and also, and also for the, the people and the, and the companies that work on the restoration, if it's a restore car. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, before our call started, you mentioned to me that pretty much your whole business is summed up in one word, correct? I always say, because we are an event company, basically, but I prefer to say that we are not uh, just an event organizer. What we try to do is creating memories now, and that's the key word, I, I think, uh, memories. Uh, so we do our best to create uh, moments that uh, those who are taking part of the event will remember for the lifetime. The participants... No, our clients, but also ourselves, because I have so many you know, fond memories of the event we did around the world. Uh, I happen to do event uh, in Japan, in, in America, in Middle East, uh, around Europe. And uh, for me, for myself, for my team, for all the collaborators, for the participants, uh, it's always you know, great to remember. You remember when we did this. Also, the, you know, the, the, the challenges that you have to, to face, uh, uh, in the end, uh, are part of uh, the the memories that you build. Yes, I totally agree with that. Yeah, and that is also why we are trying to change, uh, you know, um, the format of Cavallino, of Cavallino Classic, also the one in Palm Beach, uh, because uh, the quality of the car has always been there. The, uh, the, the, the serious judging has always been there. Uh, what we are trying to add is some action, or uh, some. Uh, entertainment uh, and some no little details that make the event more enjoyable and also more attractive for the younger generation more dynamic let's say which um, um, is also a way to no uh, make it last uh, in the decade the future decades uh, attracting uh, no younger people and also fostering no the passion in the in the young generation which is i think also something that uh, is good for the entire collector car world and not just uh, for us as, uh, as the organizer of the show. I totally agree with you. And you had quite a few young kids running around there with their video cameras. And, you know, to your point, they were looking at the new whatever, F12 or whatever it might be. Yeah. But while they're there, they're seeing the Tessera. So they're seeing the, you know, GTO. They're seeing the older cars, the 275s, uh, which is really great because they see the lineage, the heritage of the Ferrari brand 
across multiple generations. So that's great. I do want to test your short-term memory. And I want to ask you, what was your favorite Ferrari at Cavallino? <laughs> oh my God. So actually <laughs> that, that is uh, uh, my favorite because that was the chairman award and I chose the car. So actually I have the, my favorite car that uh, was the 1993 40 LM. Uh, uh, yes. Why? It was a fantastic car. Uh, but also uh, it, th that car came out when I was in my 20s and I was actually dreaming you know, uh, to one day own uh, a car like that. And uh, <laughs> so uh, that, that's, uh, that's the reason of the choice. But uh, I really, uh, really uh, mm, liked uh, all the cars, all the 150 cars that we had, that we had on, on the loan. Of course, uh, they were all beautiful, but uh, especially the, the, the 75 cars lineup that we created for the 75th anniversary of Ferrari. That was really special. Uh, I, I, I hear people saying, well, I didn't like that you put the 250 GTO in the big loan and not in the front loan uh, with the, 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 the big car, the valuable cars. But actually, that's something I would do again tomorrow morning at all, because it was fantastic to walk on this yeah. U-shaped line starting from 1947. And we had a 166 Spider Corsa all the way to the present. No, uh, seeing the evolution of Ferrari, how they change. And I think uh, uh, this was that was very difficult to put together. Uh, I, th I, I think you can imagine how much we struggle to find the, the right car for every year. And then at the, the last minute, someone, someone says, oh, I cannot come anymore, so you have to replace it. Yes. But we didn't have any single hole. So we had each, every, uh, uh, each and every year represented by a, a car that actually was representing that, that year, that age for Ferrari. So uh, yeah. it was a fantastic walk uh, through history. Yeah, that is great. I, I really appreciate that as well. Because like you said, you just walk into you and you're walking through 75 years of Ferrari history live and in front of you as you walk. Wow, that's really cool. Now, if you would, so tell our listeners, you have Cavallino Classic on Saturday. Then what, what event occurs on Sunday? So actually, Cavallino is a four-day event. So we started on Thursday with a, a racetrack event. Uh, was quite small to be honest, uh, but uh, you know that Palm Beach uh, International Ra Raceway has been sold uh, to uh, real estate investment. Uh, I don't know what will happen, maybe condos or a supermarket, I don't know, okay. but uh, it's not there anymore. So we moved to a fantastic private uh, club in um, Opaloka, where the Concourse Club was fantastic, uh, superb hospitality. We had uh, not so many cars, but very good ones. I'm sure next year, uh, uh, as yeah. we will start earlier, uh, it will be a, a much bigger event as well. Then the Friday, we had a tour. The tour we only had 30 spaces because of the size of the restaurant where uh, we started the tour at lunch. But we had fantastic cars and a fantastic atmosphere. We did a very nice scenic drive uh, uh, on the A1A you know, along the, the Florida coastline. It was fantastic. Also with the escort of the state troopers. Uh, they were so fantastic in helping us going smoothly was just a scenic ride, uh, nothing serious, but uh, we had a lot of fun. Saturday is the main event, uh, uh, the concourse of elegance. And then we, uh, Sunday, um, it's a concourse, but not, uh, not really a concourse. Let's say it's an exhibition of uh, classic cars of any age and any brand with a light judging, let's say. It's a charity event. We collect uh, funds. Uh, um, then I can explain you also what, what we are doing you know, uh, in terms of charity. But uh, let's say we had 85 cars of any brand. We also encourage uh, especially cars uh, from our region, motor, the Motor Valley. So we had a lot of Ferraris, and also Maseratis, uh, Dallara, Pagani, Lamborghini. So we had a nice mix. We had a, a nice group of uh, American pre-war cars. And for, for the first time, uh, I also um, said yes to and a very nice guy, a collector of Harley Davidson, to display his motorbikes. So yeah. we also had a very nice uh, small group of uh, of Harleys. So which was your uh, favorite car from that show? Considering you know a lot, not just Ferraris there. So I want to know what your tastes lie outside of Ferraris. And I'm hoping it's not an Alpha because I know you like Alphas. <laughs> what else caught your eye there? It's difficult. It's a very difficult choice. Um, <laughs> my favorite best of show. I really love the the motorbikes. Ah, okay. <laughs> I, the motorbikes. Okay. 
We got this 1915 uh, Harley, one of the very first. Uh, was a fantastic. I wasn't able to make that show, but I heard great things about it. And I do have a car that I would pick from that show because I ran into it in the parking lot on Saturday. Uh-huh. And it's, I think it's a 1983, but it's the, I think it was the Monaco Grand Prix pace car, which was a white Lamborghini Countach with police light bars on the top. It was uh-huh. one of the most yes, right. interesting that was cars. A very interesting car. Uh huh. It looks like a Lamborghini police car. So who can't love that? <laughs> good, good. You're right. That, that was certainly one of the one of the best. Well, I really appreciate your time here today. Uh, before we close, I did give you a slight heads up, but I do play a little game called Keep Cash and Crush at the end. So I give you three cars. Uh, I will tell you, none of them will be really high end Ferraris. I'm not cruel, and you have to tell me which one you want to keep forever, which one you want to cash in to sell it. And then which one you're going to send to the crusher, which I know is tough. So if you can't pick one to crush, just tell me which one's number three, and then I'll throw it in the crusher, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right, so here are your three cars. Uh Your your first car is a 1960 Porsche 356 Carrera Speedster. So that's Uh a rare special Porsche. My God. Uh Your next one is a Ferrari. That's a 1964 uh-huh. Ferrari 330 GT. So I didn't pick like a GTO or something crazy. And then your last car is a 1960 Mercedes-Benz Gullwing. So those are your three cars. You have to pick one to keep forever, one to cash in, and one to send to the crusher. The 1960 Porsche Carrera Speedster, the 1964 Ferrari 330 GT, and then the 1960 Mercedes-Benz <laughs> Gullwing. <laughs> oh my god that's so embarrassing <laughs> um oh that's uh difficult i i, I couldn't really crash any of them that's right that's right <laughs> but, uh, it's hypothetical okay it's uh let's say um, okay it's a challenge but, but i will certainly keep the ferrari um okay but um um yeah oh my god uh, yeah then um uh, it, it would make sense to cash uh, and to sell the Galwig. Uh, it would be a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That one is actually worth more than the career speedster. So good point there. Uh, then, then now the only problem is that I would have to crash the only convertible one that you mentioned. So. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's right. I didn't know you like convertibles before this call. <laughs> wow. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, so, uh, um, okay. Uh, yeah, that's very sad. Um, hopefully, uh, we are not crashing it <laughs> for you. <laughs> so I got you to crush a convertible, which totally goes against your personal collection, right? Oh, my God, yes. Uh, All right. I'm very proud, and I'm very glad it was painful for you. But, it's again, it's hypothetical, theoretical. None of this would oh, actually happen in the real world. So, Well, okay. awesome, man. Thank you so much for joining us on the Collector Car Podcast. Thank you, Greg. It was a pleasure being with you. Thanks for listening to the Collector Car Podcast. Don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes, and be sure to follow us on Instagram and everywhere else at the Collector Car Podcast.